Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to talk about how to manage the airway in a person who is potentially unconscious or going into surgery or has airway obstructions or for other, other reasons that may lead to airway embarrassment. So we have a mannequin right here that is a perfect test bed for this situation. And uh, we will show you basically some of the elementary maneuvers uh, uh, necessary to clear an airway so that the person can breathe and also the way that you can assist the person to breathe uh, properly and how to ventilate the patient uh, with an embu bag and a uh, airway or possibly later on more complicatedly with an endotracheal tube that we will show how to insert these things. So the first thing is uh, with airway management you would like to be comfortable and you want to be have the patient in a position so that you have good access to the airway. In this case what I'm going to sort of show is if the person has an obstructed airway and the and is not breathing properly you need to clear the airway a basic BLS maneuver you basically pull the jaw forward you might want to stick your finger in there if you have a glove on or something pull the jaw forward and uh, that might already clear the airway if the person is breathing. Um, if that is not the case, you might want to insert an airway. This is an oral airway. You can either take a tongue blade, depress the tongue, and slide this airway over the tongue. The idea is that the tongue has to be cradled in this particular curvature. The way to measure the proper airway would be to from the mouth to the uh, earlobe that is about a right size airway and uh, this will basically make it possible for air to get past the tongue to your glottis and into the lungs. There are other forms of airway or other forms of insertion. You can take this airway and insert it upside down and with the rotation type of movement rotate it over the tongue and put it in. So say for example this patient is unconscious or needs ventilatory support. We will take an embu bag, we'll leave the airway now in place, pull the jaw forward a little bit, hyperextend the head a little bit. It is also helpful to have the head up on a pillow a little bit in sort of a sniffing position. And then we place our mask onto the mouth here. We come from the nose and place it over the mouth. Uh, the ring finger, little finger and middle finger sort of support the chin, pulling it backwards. Your index and thumb basically push that uh, mask onto the face. You have to get a reasonable fit and then you can sort of start ventilating that patient. And as you sort of see, I have a clear airway. I can ventilate the chest. You see the chest kind of going up and down in this situation. Another way this can be done and is often done in operating room situations and sometimes it's less uh, problematic for the patient to have a nasal airway put in place. This is a nasal airway. In this case you measure it from the nares again to the ear and it is inserted by putting it straight down in a direction toward the ear, definitely not toward the head and you just insert it by pushing it through the nose into that particular direction and now you have a situation where you have a nasal as well as an oral airway sometimes you have to go even that route and again same kind of ventilation maneuver and you can ventilate the chest now if you're in a situation that you're a small person and you have very small hands, you may want to use both hands doing the same sort of thing to get a good mask fit and ask one of your colleagues to do the ventilation. So these are some very basic maneuvers here. If we look at an airway uh, that is like uh, the class 4 type airway where you will, your vision, your visual of your epiglottis is not going to be uh, the top one here, but it is more like uh, 
uh, a little crescent and that's all you get to see. So in this case, you have several kind of devices available that can be used to hopefully help you with this uh, intubation. The main sort of thing is uh, rather than rushing into something like this, one should think ahead of time uh, if there is a particular difficulty and it should be anticipated and also you may want to have some help in this procedure. So in this case, I make the anticipation for a moment that this is going to be a difficult intubation. I therefore hook this person up to oxygen initially, let this individual breathe some oxygen to fill the lungs full of oxygen, and what that does, it will buy me some time. So now I might give this person a paralytic, and uh, I have my endotracheal tube ready, and I have an assistant hopefully who will help me with this and I may sort of looking at the patient bend my tube a certain way and I also will use a stylet, a so-called Eschmann stylet or bougie that frequently can be inserted when I cannot get the tube quite into the place. So I may approach this the same way again, the ringoscope in the left hand, I identify the epiglottis if I see it and I move my wand into the place it goes down the trachea and I feel the tracheal rings going click, 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 click. I think I'm there now. I'm moving this toward the middle. I ask my assistant to actually just hand me the endotracheal tube. We put that over the guide and now we come straight down and now I'm hanging up, most likely on the vocal cord or something. I'm going to pull it back a little bit. I'm going to give it a counterclockwise twist and basically then pull that stylet out. We'll see how good we did this now, or how well we did it, I should say. I'm going to inflate the cuff, and there we go again. And uh, again, it is important to verify carbon dioxide exhalation and also listen to the lungs so that we did not put this endotracheal tube into the right or main stem bronchus. So that might be the use of these ancil uh, ancillary devices. Uh, I next will show you some of the other devices that come in handy just to ventilate a patient in an emergency if an un if a, um, intubation is not successful. In the late 1980s and then 1990s, uh, a device was introduced that is uh, sort of an uh, airway, but it uh, is actually far more functional than, say, the regular airway or nasal airway. It is a so-called uh, laryngeal mask airway. In other words, uh, this little cup that you see will sit right of the uh, laryngeal inlet. The tip is right at the esophageal inlet. It has a, a, a tube with it that you hook up to your um, uh, embu bag or to your ventilation system. You inflate it a little bit and it provides really a pretty good access to the airway. Um, they are also called supraglottic devices and this is probably one of the standard ones. They are very easy to insert and that was in part uh, the brainchild of uh, uh, a, a British developer and uh, they're inserted by holding them in this kind of way. You put your index finger right in the top of this uh, shelf here and then you insert it by pushing your finger up against the hard pellet and you actually just insert it getting around the tongue and you take it out and then uh, we inflate it with our big syringe. Interestingly enough, the manufacturers basically provide you all the information for the size, uh, the weight of the patient is indicated on this thing, and uh, you can um, also gives you the uh, potential depth of it and so forth. A uh, little hard to see, but I certainly ventilate the patient with this particular device, and. Uh, they are used particularly in surgery for short surgical cases. 
usually with a patient supine. And they're used in rescue situations where you cannot get an uh, endotracheal tube in place, but you need to ventilate the patient and you try to buy time. In addition, they are very useful in people who are, uh, have, certain, have a lot of facial hair. Uh, and here I'm going to show you the person that's perfect for, Grigory Rasputin. And I'll show you the slide of that guy <laughs> at that point. Did I show it? Uh, yeah, I showed it to you, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, so uh, what uh, the problem here might be in person who is bearded is that you basically cannot ventilate them, the air escaping all around the face. Uh, so in that case, inserting right off the bat one of these devices bypasses the beard and all the facial hair and gives you the proper uh, uh, ability to ventilate the person. So uh, what I showed you here is sort of a first generation LMA. We'll move on for a moment to a second generation LMA, which is a so-called intubating LMA. They're designed a little bit differently. But the idea is the same, and uh, the thought process here is that you put an LMA in place. Now you go and ventilate the patient. And again, on these mannequins that may or may not always work so well. And this, this guy actually is pretty good. And so, so the person can be ventilated or is breathing. But say these devices, the classic LMAs as well as these intubating LMAs, do not protect against aspiration, for example, and you may decide now to put an endotracheal tube in. So this particular device allows you to take the, cuff, the uh, connector off. Mind you, it is connected here. You take a tube of a particular size, which is actually written on the LMA itself, and you start inserting it and manipulating the head. You sort of listen is the patient breathing through this tube now? Yes. And you just, on inhalation, advance it. Now, unfortunately, in these mannequins, these things usually end up in the esophagus and not in the lungs, but uh, quite often they go exactly where you want them to be, that is in the lungs, and that could be a blind intubation. So now, assuming for a moment you actually hit your target and this thing is uh, in the trachea, then you have to take the connector of the endotracheal tube off. Make sure you find your connector again. This is critical. You take a pusher now. You hook it up to the tube and then you pull your LMA out over it. Like that. Take the LMA out. Take your uh, pusher off. And as I say, you must know where you put your connector. Now you have an endotracheal tube in the proper place and the procedure is finished. So in summary, this is pretty much most of the tools that we have. We have the laryngoscopes. We have various devices to enhance the ability to get to the trachea and insert a tube. Uh, there are other devices around that you might encounter with the EMS system. This, for example, is a king tube and it is designed so you just kind of stick it in there, uh, you might say with reckless abandon, and then you inflate this with a fair amount of air, basically sealing off the esophagus as well as the uh, area around the mouth and pharynx, just leaving an opening between those two balloons to ventilate the trachea. And uh, as I say, this is a uh, device used by EMS services and makes uh, ventilation of the patient in emergency situations uh, very doable. Uh, so, see. so I think this pretty much concludes uh, uh, the presentation here for now. <laughs>